The Kitchen Table Incension Podcast, brought to you by the BB Blog. Are we fully human yet? All right, Nish, take us down to the table. Recording the cauldron is now on the table. Tom has been scolding me because he listens to our conversations and he loves them. Yeah. He really loves them. Well, we love Tom. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) I'm recording. Because he loves our baby. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So he's he's doing a good job. Yes. Yeah. So, but he said, you know, babe, you got to like, you got to lead the conversation. You just like, you know, and I said, no, I don't. Au contraire. Oh, <laughs> oh. no, I do not. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just love, you know, it goes so deep and I love it. And I don't, I don't do this with anybody else on Atlanta. You're my two sisters. Yes, we we do have a thing here. We this is, sure it, do. It always is like uh, this is why when it I miss you guys and this this whatever the synergy is that we have, I love it and I cherish it. It's very very special. I agree. I think it's great and it's nice that we you know it's not every month all the time, but we've been doing pretty good lately, and yeah. I like that we are able to come <laughs> together and have talks. So I really good. would. I think I'm I'm back in the saddle i really do oh excellent because we started doing this in september uh no it was an it was right around september of 2019 and then i i finally got it together three months later to record and that's when i got the news that we had to move so it's 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 been very funny you know is it really coming up on a year oh my god (laughs) holy crap i can't believe it either it's crazy it's really just flying what is up with time? It's looping. It's so weird. It's, I think a lot of people are experiencing this. I th- actually think everyone is experiencing the mutability of time because we obviously know it's a construct and we, we create it to have these cycles and get, be productive. And I mean, we know the natural cycles, the lunar cycles. This is why I like the Jewish calendar too, because it's lunar, right? It makes more sense. You can see the cycles in the sky it, it's like clear from full moon to full moon should be a month <laughs> you know, like this makes sense to me and you know menstrual cycles happen like all this stuff just can get in alignment so easily and then what was it i mean we got the gregorian and the justinian and all this stuff just started coming in trying to bend in these natural cycles for what when i was looking into it all looked very political for the political reasons but don't i don't know i mean mm. it's off the cuff and I did just get out of bed y'all JJ knows this (laughs) Um, speaking of time you just jogged my memory and my curious are you guys familiar with um, uh, uh, Carl uh, Kalaman I don't know babes Um, he is just this wonderful uh, I think he's Swedish Um, way back in the day, and I'm talking like 2004, 2005, I started becoming aware of him through, um, God, she was a renowned astrologer and has that marvelous publishing company. She lives in your neck of the woods, Nish, and she's older than I am, and uh, uh, Hanclau, Barbara Hanclau. And I was paying attention to her stuff, and she started pointing me to this guy, Carl Kalaman. And he said that the, the, uh, the, everyone was going nuts back in 2011, 2010, about the Mayan calendar. Remember all of that absolute crazy hysteria. And he said, well, no, actually, um, he has this just lovely accent. And I, I don't want to be um, disrespectful, but it's sort of, sort of the way that he speaks. No, because they have it all wrong. It's about because the Gregorian calendar is all wrong. And the end of the mind calendar is on October 28, 2011. So um, it, it, it's this enormously mind-blowing body of... Um, writing that he has put out there and he uh, 
he's also, I, I think he's a biophysicist. He's a, 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 um, in, in, he's a physicist of some specialty, um, along with mathematics and consciousness. He's really, you know, one of the very interesting physicists who has gone off the, the rails and, you know, plays where you and I in, um, um, like to play. So he said that it's based on um, energy waves and each successive wave uh, is exponentially faster. And the actual ninth wave occurred on October 28th, 2011. I have to go back and look at it. And I don't want to just hog the conversation right now, but I think you both would find it extremely interesting. And now that I'm putting this out there publicly, I will um, put the links out there because Carl, uh, I think it's Carl Johan Kale Kaleman. Uh, he has, um, he's very wise. He's a sage. He's a keeper. So, um, so there. <laughs> I look forward to digging into what he has to offer. So yes, definitely get those links to us and to anyone listening. Uh, so we can all enjoy that. I love everything you send and recommend. It's, it always leads me to a good place. Thank you. I'm just going to, uh, let's see if I can get it to you guys right now. Uh, girl, come on, come on. So he said, he said October 28th, 2011. Is that what he said? Yes, here it is. Here it is. Let me just hear it. Yeah. Oh, he's from Stockholm. Uh, oh, he's, um, this looks interesting. Dr. Carl Johan Kalaman, Consciousness and the Coronavirus. Um, do you guys want to talk about the coronavirus and the virus and the matrix and the hologram and the strangeness? Or should we? <laughs> well, it's it's kind of difficult to not talk about it these days. I, I mean, like it's the white elephant in in the podcast. It's a little hard not to. <laughs> so, I don't know. I'm open to anything. Okay. All right. I just um, I I can't do three things at once. I can do two, but I'm going to stick with the link in the chat, and then I've got this is to his website. Okay. Um, here you go. So I haven't had a chance to catch up with your latest uh, interviews, although I listened to the obelisk last night. I, I, that was great. I was really wonderful. He um, you know what? I was a little intimidated going, cause M Miguel's such a deep well. Mm. And, and he, there have been a few people over the years that have I've gone in a little bit intimidated which is a good thing for me I I really enjoy that energy uh, and so I went in I never really go in with notes and I actually had notes I had to make sure oh that's impressive yeah I'm, I'm usually like I I go in I make sure if I don't know them I definitely binge them and there have been plenty that I didn't know Jerry booked and I've binged them and, you know, and some have become friends and, and some not, you know, some are, it, it's just interesting how everything plays. Mm -hmm. But he, uh, Miguel, of course, I've known who Miguel is and we followed each other on Twitter and all that. And he's got, you know, fantastic show, but I had never really gotten too deep into his world because I'm deep in my world and time, 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 honey. It's like, what do you listen to? So I was really nervous. <laughs> like this man, and he answers questions and is done. He's not one of those meanderers. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like some- well, Yes, some, I know what you're talking about, yes. Yeah, I mean, I can answer a question. I can ask a question. Sometimes that's all I need is one question. And the show's over. The person <laughs> meandered, the, you know, like did the whole show, but you know, it's, which is great. It, you know, fantastic. But Miguel really stays focused, and uh, and that was something I had learned when I was listening to. I had realized I had never really listened to interviews of his, and so I listened to a couple beforehand because I just do that and that's when I realized okay he answers questions he really stays on on point 
And so that's when I was like, I need to have bullet points. And Jer Jerry didn't know. Jerry had, uh, Jerry wanted to come in and have Miguel really explain Gnosticism and all that because there's where his focus is. And uh, that was kind of it. We're, the obelisk is all about meandering. So I, after that, after that experience, I'm so glad I went in with my bullet points because I think I would have, for once, people would have heard me struggle. No, it was very smooth. And um, there's a graciousness that you have, Nish, that um, is just wonderful. There's a soothing quality to your voice, but it, you were on, on point. And I think that if it, there, for people who are, well, one thing I've noticed about your shows is that the um, the listenership goes up after they go out, right? So as people, they're going to be seeking him out to hear about Gnosticism. So I think that was just the right way to go. I mean, yeah. he's, that, he's, you know? he's really, truly, I mean, if anyone who even comes across that interview and who does may not know who he is. Mm -hmm. he, uh, listening to the interview should just give everyone a clue. He can quote these. He can quote Nietzsche. He can quote Plotinus and and all uh, all the masters and Jung. His depth of knowledge to yeah. just be able to quote stuff is intimidating because I'm always like, okay, I paraphrase. <laughs> You know, like I can't even remember the frickin' frackin' names. I know. So, <laughs> so I'm like, holy crap, this guy's got like an indentic. Is it I indentic? What is the memory that um Oh uh, oh yeah. Now I can't that's contagious now. Identic or indentic oh jeez. Yes. Um, anyway, but his memory just must be so sharp hmm. that he's able Eidetic. to Edetic? Is that it? Something like that. Um, we'll get corrected. You yes. know we will. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you out there. Um, you know what I love? One of the things I love about listening to his shows, the amount of work that he puts into his yes. stories. Yes. Oh my God. They're, to me, they're inspirational. And sometimes I- His admit, intros. Oh, they're just phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. He's in his own class. Yeah. Yeah. He is. So it was a great honor. And I'm, I was at the end of it, I was just, I was almost exhausted because it, it was, uh, it was, well, there's so much going on. I think this leads into like the, the stuff that's going on. I've been really preoccupied with a lot of energetics coming my way and other stuff that I had to really get called into staying on point and focus with Miguel. And that exhausted me because I've been scattered. And that's one of the things, and this is kind of that transition into that discussion. Sure, go for it. I have been just finding myself in strange places emotionally that I'm not accustomed to. And, uh, and I realize that it is like every day now I wake up and I'm like, is this my energy? Is this astrological signatures? Is this the collect, is, are these collective waves? Is this the human resonance? I, every day is like this journey into what is this I'm feeling because it's so rocky right now and tumultuous it, it the, all the stuff we're swimming in and you're lucky bb because you're really remote i'm out here even though i'm not in portland it's it's like across the river from me even though it's not i'm not in vancouver which is like the bridge right there and you can see portland but i'm close enough and the energetic signatures are right here so oh portland yeah yeah and it's a mega center mm -hmm. here right now mm -hmm. of of interesting energy mm -hmm. and so it's it's difficult for people like me especially i'm really trying to get away keats ross is 
distaste for the word empath has come back and you know I had a distaste for that word <laughs> and then Kate's brought it back home because I finally accepted the word empath I finally accepted it like last year mm -hmm. and then so I've been kind of honing in on it and then Kate's is like oh god I hate that word and so somehow his struggle with it reamalgamated mine and so I'm actually looking for a, a better word but it, it, at it's any point interesting because i hate to interrupt you but i'm going to forget this if i don't about no, carry on. the languaging yes um, i have also had my own insights around empath and empathy the states and what the difference between empathy and compassion in yes. feeling be uh, the difference between feeling um and feeling deeply feeling emotionally, feeling with compassion, feeling with empathy. These are all very, very um, specific, refined emanations coming from the same place. And some are, are more expansive and some, you know, it, it's a dance. They're, they're about, there could be an infinite amount of frequencies within this one little ray coming from the word let's say the sphere of empathy slash compassion. Yeah. And you being who you are, and you know, I've got that too. And I, I know JJ has that too. We oh, do. Yeah. We talked yeah. about this last time. We have to be very careful, but it, I, I realized that when I was super little, I knew what it was without having the language for it. Yes. Yes. Well, it's such a powerful experience that you kind of have to, once you realize that it's not always you, it, it's, it's like a being into itself, understand like the waves of other people that come at you. And when you realize it's not you, it's these energetic signatures from the collective or someone you're close to and their, their waves hit you and you somehow take it in. Uh, you learn early on that it's not you. Hopefully, I see people get taken out by this quality often, and that you know they they drown it out in in different ways: booze, alcohol, pills, self destructive behavior, because they don't understand that these waves that are coming at them are not their own. And well, that's what I was trying to tell Keats because yeah. I know he's struggling. And uh, I, I personally think that's part of why, and you know, I've told him that, I think that's, that's why I asked him, are you, in, are you an empath? And that's when he had that response. <laughs> you know, I, this is very interesting because, um, and when I tell you this, it's not that I, I'm disagreeing with anything or that I have an opposite experience by any means but the way it also has something to do with the fact that i'm i'm um i'm i'm getting into my wonderful elder knowledge years right so i was just plagued by by onslaught of um energies for years and years and years and exploring shamanistic um methods of trying to determine what's mine and what's not and it wasn't until very recently when I decided, oh, fuck it. I am going to just say this is all mine because from a certain perspective, if I believe that I am one with everything and that I wouldn't be here if I were not one with everything because it's everything that's animating this, this you know, the matter, my soul is, is here I'm just going to take it in. It's, it's, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to own it. And it really got my dreams going. It got me um, in this um, in, in imaginal realm of looking at my ancestors and stuff that is being elicited from the energy from quote unquote others and um, uh, systems and uh, whatever you want out there, it's still eliciting this stuff that I am personally feeling, experiencing. So it's got to be, I have, it was, let me put it this way, because I don't know if I'm making any sense. For me, it wasn't until I said, I am taking responsibility um, 
that this is my feeling wherever it is originating from i can't i can't just push it away because i know from experience if i push it away or i start putting up shields and um you know saging things which i'm not saying don't do because i do it all the time because there's a clarity and a purity and a beauty and the angels and the elementals love it but to push it away with that purpose for me it was making it worse i yeah you know that is that is exactly where i'm at with it and so that is what i'm saying except for i come into it with the idea of what's this so i view the world as it's my world is all me so the emanations are me out and this is most union and you know this so but there's also this idea of i just so like upon waking and with nothing going on if i'm in a mood it is the very first thing I kind of assess, all right, what's, it's like getting in my body. Okay. My fingers work, my hands work. I'm going to get up and I'm going to animate. And, uh, and, and like, and y'all know my story of when I first came into this flesh when I was a baby and I, I did, I just always make sure it's like getting in a car, the lights working, all this. And uh, so I do that. But one of the things that I, have found for me is these waves on on the deeper level it's all connected to me and i accept it all but like a cell in the body i have natural (laughs) filters this is my i'm in my little cell and this little cell is has you know its own little immune protective covering i love this analogy yeah right so i was gonna say something similar i'm really i'm digging this go ahead Mm -hmm. and so that's that's where i i just uh, and jj you could probably take this further then and that's what i'm saying this is where i have to differentiate what i'm going to take on and where the source is so if there is something actually deeply I, and JJ knows, especially since I'm coming out of the day where yesterday, it, last night in the night, I experienced the deepest anxiety I've had in in my modern memory. I can't oh my even. Oh God! Know. Really? Yes. Yeah. Like paranoia, anxiety, mm-hmm. unbelievable, and uh, it's not like me. And so I, you know, mm. I, I, I. I'm stuttering even trying to explain it. I'm glad I can just admit it out here like this. It, it is rare and it's taken me aback. It's, um, so I've been trying to discern like, where is it? I personally have no reason for it in my personal little cell here. There's no reason, everything's stable. Mm-hmm. It's all fine. I have a lovely little experience going on. Why do I have this kind of, why is this, particular vibration affecting me what is this and so i've been trying to figure it out i've I looked at that in a course there's a lot of reasoning in the astrology i've got a leo moon we just moved into leo we're going into a grand t-square of fixed signs in the collective on the western side of astrology i've got one in my chart uh you know, so there's a lot of activated. Mm-hmm. Oh, mine's activated right now. And so then, but collectively it's act, it, we're hitting that too. But this is, I just want to say, this is where you and I meet because I, I'm totally with you. And, and yeah, it, it's like, you know, the phrase that comes into my mind, it's the Portland free radicals. Oh You're my God. around you, right? Right with the with the body and cell analogy, that is so perfect. Oh man, yes. yeah, that's exactly. Oh, geez, that's why I love these conversations. Mm-hmm. And, and so that's you know, like I'm just trying to trying to work it out. But I know that the paranoia, anxiety is actually not from me. It's not in my cell. So it is. <laughs> where everything is i'm part of this greater body my cell is still healthy but oh, this a, is trying to permeate it paul levy would say this, you're so healthy 
because if it were the Wachiko, you would not even be feeling the paranoia or the anxiety. You would be very comfortable. With JJ, the- how are you? What is so? I know JJ <laughs> has like a contribution on this specifically, especially since we were taught she was helping me work it out earlier. Right. <laughs> it's just so mind. intense. <laughs> oh, I just I. I found I mean, what you were saying about being a cell. That's that's how I view humanity. Basically, I I feel like we're all individual cells of a larger organism. We're not just humanity, but everything on the planet and even the planets and uh, everything. Basically, I feel like everything is this integral part of a larger organism. And you know, the cells in the body affect the surrounding cells. So if you have a cell that's sick somehow, it's got, I don't want to say cancer, but cancer or something like that, of course it's going to affect the Free radicals, what right. takes it down, right? It's going to affect what's, what's surrounding it. It ripples out. And I think, you know, collectively we do all affect each other that way. And yes, we should always be aware of what is, as you're saying, our own emotions in our, our cell versus what's coming in from energetics from the outer cells. So, um, <laughs> sorry, I got a little off point there, but, but, but that's what I was thinking of when you were saying that. I think we really do have to check ourselves and make sure it's our own feelings. It's, you know, maybe it's our past coming up again, things that we thought we dealt with, but we haven't completely dealt with, healed through, whatever. It's good to assess those things. But I think now these, I mean, I'm feeling the same way. I feel like, I feel like every day more than ever is like an unknown, like we're, on the edge of some cliff or something and we don't know, or the, we're approaching a wall and we don't know what's on the other side. It feels, we're in such a unstable environment right now. Um, it's just hard to keep your footing and keep grounded. You can be, you know, you can be a, an extremely grounded person, but I feel like right now it's so unpredictable for everyone it just seems like we're standing on the edge of this unknown abyss or something. It's really, it's uh, amazing. I don't know what to say. <laughs> That's what it just feels like every day. I'm finding myself waking up, not even, I mean, I can have plans. I can structure my days. I can have, you know, oh, we've got, we've got, the cauldron at six, I've got this call at four tomorrow, we can schedule everything out. But I still feel like every single day I wake up like, huh, what do I do today? What's going on? Like, I feel like I've really, uh, it's a challenge, it seems to anchor into that day, every single day. So, you know, eventually as the day goes on i work into it but it's, it's feeling all so up in the air more than it ever has to me personally well that's the truth of the situation isn't it everything is completely up in the air <laughs> you know and sometimes it feels like i'm on a ship instead of on the earth yeah it just all feels very tentative and transient and it's just, it, like it's just it's like a meandering stream of water that you don't know what turn it's going to take next. Wow. And of course, life is like that, but it just seems like we've been able to predict more in the past. And now it's just every single day with the social media and the news, um, any information coming at us, it's just more and more of of a a spectacle, a, a circus, 
you know it's like the freak show came to know you're like whoa you look at the news and you're like wow it's just it's kind of astonishing at least to me personally every day even though i knew a lot of this was coming down the pipeline mm -hmm. it's just very interesting to watch how it's all unfolding each and every day that's something i wanted to look at and observe is we we all saw this this isn't anything i mean it's in all my videos uh, there's nothing here that and in, including the coming raining from the sky i've put that in two videos uh and that's not happened yet it's coming and uh so uh, you know i've been able to, i see what's coming but it do, and i know that a lot of us do it's and anyone can we all have these abilities. It's not like I'm special. Uh, but that, like what you just said, JJ, is a big idea, a big bone to chew on. We all had talked about this, that we're, you know, we knew this was all coming very clearly. And it's, it's interesting to see it play out and be here and be in it. And yet, that doesn't negate the fact that we have to ride these waves and no matter how clearly our crystal visions were stevie nicks hello uh <laughs> no matter how clearly our crystal oh, visions were here we are and we're we're in now we're in what we saw and that's where it's like the rubber hits the road the you know and and we're riding these waves out so i feel a sense of of being overwhelmed at times i'm sure that's where my anxiety is coming in but i also have an anxiety because i also clearly have clear vision as to what's ahead of us and it's it's a, a little makes me a little nervous and i am a prepared person for stuff because i see ahead with remote viewing and all this and uh and this is where people that didn't see this stuff coming and and then get too pinpointed in on details and cannot see or are not seeing or will not see from a backed up stance the bigger picture like okay so yeah it's raining in your neck of the woods it's maybe a little off over there we'll stand up it, you know there's it's there's ice caps building over here ice caps melting over here big fires over here like if you stand back and you see where it's just kind of like off everywhere and uh the people that weren't expecting this i think are becoming more taken back by it than we that have seen it who's in a better position to deal with it i don't know sometimes it feels like it's maybe easier to not know what's down the pike than to know what's down the pike right you're driving you know that there's, there's a crash and so you you're the one you're the ones driving slow because you know you're going to be held up in traffic and sitting there so why speed to get there and then sit when you could just go slow knowing that there's a, a jam or you know and deal with everyone honking at you and driving around you because you're the on the right lane going slow because you know there's some fuckery ahead and uh and then they are causing you all this grief until they get there and you know <laughs> yeah that's that's how it's felt for <laughs> at times i mean it's uh, it's like knowing you're right it's like knowing there's going to be some terrible car crash or something and you try to warn people and they just want to do what they want to do they want to listen they think you're crazy and then then it's happening and then you're like oh my god and, and nonetheless you you're awful. all waiting at the end you're all right. stuck waiting in your car <laughs> for the thing to get cleared up and so it didn't matter that i was going taking it slower because i saw it was there and hoping that i could buy myself a little more drive time before i hit a total standstill and you know especially like if 
you know, if it's going to be a standstill in hot weather and you're suffering in the car, right? Oh, <laughs> Today's the day of analogies. <laughs> I want to share something with you guys. Please. You just triggered a dream memory. And I'm living Ooh, it right now. Yes. This is, I, oh my God. The dream was this, and this is when I was in doing really, really deep Jungian work back in Chicago. But listen to this, it's nighttime and I'm walking on um, a riverbed and it's, um, it's lit and I, I look and there are women all around me. I'm walking and I'm within a procession of women our feet are bare, the river rocks are smooth. It's a beautiful light because it's cast from the, um, the candles and the lanterns that we're holding up. And as we walk all along the riverbanks, more women are joining us. And I just realized I'm walking with my sisters and that's what I thought in my dream. I'm walking with my sisters in the unknown river and we are holding up the light and we're walking there and I'm with my sisters. My dream is being coming true right now. This is giving me the chills. Yeah, same of here. Course, I'm like closing my eyes and you're taking us, <laughs> you know, giving us those psychic images really clear. Yeah, the the unknown river. Ooh. Oh yes. my god. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have chills of recognition and, you know, it sounds trite and I say this all the time, but I really deeply love you both so much. I know you and whoever's listening, This I, I don't know if you two have actually met physically, but I've never met um, Nish and JJ to give them a hug. And to yeah, be well, none of us have. Yeah. yeah. This is pure energetics. We are connected on such a deep level. It's so beautiful and so needed. And it's not just the three of us that need this. What we're doing is putting, ah, we're weaving, we're weaving a new kind of coherency that doesn't need to be understood with the mind. Yes, yes. Yeah. I think the mind gets in the way so often. It does for me. Yeah, I agree. The mind is great, but it's not all there is. And no, it, it's necessary. And, and we, it, we definitely, it's all, everything's necessary. We wouldn't have it. I've, I really come from that place where it, everything's necessary. It wouldn't be in, we wouldn't be playing around with everything. Every nail is necessary in the house, holding this house together. You know, it's like- Absolutely. Uh, oh God, you know, the mind being necessary. Well, look at my daughter. She's um, uh, schizophrenic. And we know that a diseased mind does not enable one to navigate the physical world very well. But I chose when we moved into this house to begin to speak with her on a different level. and. Mm her i'm not going to call it a higher mind because that's a connection that's a term yes there's a deeper space in her mm, even etheric or spiritual words are it, it's not in a just in the physical realm it's in a different emanation of her her soul who she is and we know each other deeply and there's such joy when we connect on that level. So that's sort of bypassing the normal mind because she can't deal there. I can, I can so relate. And this is where, and I, I brought this up last night, but it, it really got scuffled over. And my, the point I was making last night also got inter, became interrupted. And so I just go with it. it. It just wasn't obviously something that needed to be brought forward in that conversation uh bring it forth and, now please <laughs> when when that friend of mine when i was having the, and this was when i lived in burbank uh mm -hmm. and it, circumstances were very difficult and not what i had signed up for 
mm-hmm. on many levels, on, like on every level of my life. And yet somehow there I was, and it, and, and it was all stuff I had forced into motion. So I had gone against every flow, mm-hmm. every psychic flow that was pushing, you know, it was all a hard effort to get there and get cr- that situation that I had going, going. And, and that should have been a sign in and of itself, but I, I chose to override all that and, and it was difficult. And as soon as really, as soon as everything was locked in and there was no going back, it was like at that moment, I realized I'd made the wrong choices and 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 then I realized like it was so difficult to get to this point of making all this happen that I should have just realized that at that point but whatever and you know this is this was my that was a sense of hubris and Taurian desire for something that actually didn't exist and so it was a Maya and I, I was thirsty and there was this illusion of water. And so I get there, I get settled, all this, the situation all around was, like I said, very, very difficult. And my colleague had said, one of my colleagues had said, uh, you just have to ride it out. And, and this is at the point last night in the conversation where you know, Miguel went on with that. He's like, you know, because I was saying, well, that we we're talking about the cliche, cliche statements and stuff. And, uh, and I, that cliche bothered me in the moment. And that's where I was, the conversation kind of got derailed last night from that. But what I was, my point of that was, it became that cliche became a mantra that has been very powerful in my life since. Wow. It is, no matter what, if I've created it, whatever the situation is, uh, that I, whatever situation is I find difficult, I constantly come back to that idea because there is, despite the fact that nothing was right, everything was really dire and acute and intense, I had this, what could I do? What could I do? I could cave. I could, I had nowhere to go. I have no net in life. My mother is dead. She's been dead 20 years, over 20 years now. She was my only net. And so I have nowhere to fall. I have no net, nothing. And it's always kind of some, you know, no family, nothing. I have some friends that, you know, I think maybe I could count on. And the the one time I did, uh, it got used against me and became the terrible situation that kind of led into a lot of other bad things. And so write it out, stick it out, became this really powerful mantra. I could fold, I could cave, I could, I could do a lot of different things, but the thing to do is keep your eyes open and write it out. This is a powerful mantra for me in my life. And I'm applying that now again, even though my personal cell is strong and healthy and vibrant, alive and effervescent even, it's filled with oxygen and and feels good. Everything around me when I'm moving through this stream feels dangerous, feels uh, feels ill at ease. And that is what I noticed creeping in. And somehow, like all viruses, they have to find a way in to the cell. They have to get in. And, uh, and that's where, that's where I have to discern what's, what's actually healthy in mind and what's an invading force and not take that in Mm -hmm. and not accept something that is not healthy for me because of my experience in when I was 17 in San Francisco, when I had a full complete mental 
breakdown and ended up under the bed. I mean, it was a psychotic snap. Yes. And and it was scary and terrifying and nobody could reach me. Nobody could reach that space. I tried to communicate what that space was and it I was unable to communicate what that space was. And I had to get my way. It took years. But I, you know, I, I came out of it. I mean, it was really like three years of being in bed, and uh, yes, yes. And, and so uh, this anxiety that I woke up with today reminded me, as I said last night. But I, I before the anxiety came on, actually, like this, the, I mentioned the seventeen thing, and it it came on afterwards and so there was this outer inner idea like i mentioned that that came up the Mm -hmm. idea of writing it out and then what i'm at three in the morning i'm awake and i can't go to bed i can't find sleep i can't find peace i can't find rest anxiety is writing me paranoia is coming in on me and uh thing uh, and this is and this is the bigger the bigger idea I want to unfold here is one of the things when I had my psychotic snap, I hate to use that, but people understand that term. Uh, And when I'm on the verge of, when I'm remote viewing without being in control of the process and I'm seeing things very clearly very, very clearly from a different perspective outside of my ego, outside of my cell. It's an overwhelming process and it's hard for others to visit you and see you in this space. And that's where I found myself because it's hard to understand. There are no words to convey the process and what you're seeing and how you're connecting everything. There's just no way to get there. There are common little, and then you find yourself looking at the very, very, very simple comfort things. You know, like being under the bed when when I had my snap, that was my, that was where I needed to be. Like I wouldn't come out. I would not come out from under the bed in, in Oakland until I got a ticket to get, to go back to Iowa. And they had, you know, my friends, had to collectively organize this to get me to get me back home in Iowa it was terrifying and uh and then you know I just went and shelled up under a bed for a while and then I came out and I was in the room you know fortunately and I, I did have you know this is when I still had family that loved me and I could fall upon you know, I'm only 17 at that time. And so I did have that space, thankfully. Uh, And I feel an uncertainty like that right now. I know I'm going to be all right. And this is getting back to the write it out mantra. I know I can write this out. But at this point on my journey, I know these energies that I'm perceiving are not my energies i'm perceiving waves from the galaxy i'm looking at the we're in a big massive shift and there's a lot of nasty energy that's coming with it and i think you're blind or have blinders on if you cannot at least observe that there's more going on here with these narratives around us of control and of oversight and overlords and uh, shutting us up, uh, breathing in our own poisons, uh, with uh, mind viruses everywhere, t- and 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 in illusions and mayas and uh, this trickery that's just all around us, and so I see why I'm tapping into that energy of me at 17 in San Francisco because I saw this then. And it was hard to take then, and here we are. You were such a child, and now you are a a grown-up goddess. And you've given me this um, idea. These are, I've had inklings and have been contemplating for the last, um, since we last spoke, 
about the, um, there's an evolutionary push in humanity that is going on on so many different levels. So back to the energies, what is mine and what is not, my sense is that you are tapping into that extremely uncomfortable unknown that nobody wants to grapple with all of these things coalescing now from where i'm coming from i i signed up somewhere sometime someplace with whatever that means i know i'm here because i want to be here now and listening to you what you just said when it's very brave to speak about the um the mental fractures that we've experienced and i know i i just have this sense because we haven't really gone into depth about this but jj and i get that i myself was 17 when i started um having these really odd terrifying experiences and I, I had a feeling being adopted, I just knew that schizophrenia ran in my DNA. And I was terrified. And like you, and I, I, you know, I myself went through very, very extremely dangerous and stormy weather to get where I am now. And I have a mantra, just hang on to the mast, hang on to the mast. And uh, because hanging onto the mast, even if, if the ship goes down, if you're hanging onto the mast, it's a different kind of energetic and I'll be able to breathe whatever I can breathe and to get back up. And I've done that. I've gone down under and died and all that stuff. But it's this unknown thing that is coalescing. It's so huge that, um, I mean, I've been waiting for it remember the um the harmonic convergence i think it was in 88 or 89 yes i was sufi dancing at that i loved it the first uh, 11 11 yeah yes and that's when i started having my first real conscious ideas because it tapped into something that i've known ever since i was a toddler about why i'm here and what i'm doing jj what's going on yes madame yes <laughs> yes what are you feeling? What are you contemplating? What is going on in your dream right now? Oh, this is definitely, I mean, even just last night, uh, what you're both talking about, I, I feel like these dark energies are trying to use these difficult times in our lives against us to try to break us down. I mean, that's what I feel like. I've had several dreams lately, even last night of, I mean, I was in a, a horrifically abusive dynamic for well over a decade. And that the people in that situation showed up in my dreamscape last night. And it seems to, it see, whatever this is, it seems to want to use these really vulnerable situations that we've had to peck away at our psyche, at our emotional states. I feel like it's, it's trying to crack in, like Nisha is Nisha saying, like it's trying to break in somehow into our cell. And I think, you know, because it's, a mind virus, an etheric thing. It's trying to pick these vulnerable points to enter. So like, it's, it's think, oh, if we can break her down this way. We've, we've got a way in this way. It's cracked open now. That's what I'm, that's what I'm getting out of it. It feels to me like that's what it's, that's the attack mode. Okay, a question arises, because as I was listening to you talk about this, yes, absolutely. And it made me think about how for years I've been on this quote unquote purification process. What does to purify mean? What does to, to be sanctified 
mean it's it's a a fire eating away at the dross at the at the gunk so you know somebody new age would say oh honey this is your opportunity to do the inner work and um hearing that myself saying that kind of pisses me off and triggers me because it's 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 as much the inner work as it is the outer work it requires such massive maturity and wisdom and understanding. And I got to say, I think the three of us have a leg up. We're getting, I mean, it, it's so damn difficult to navigate when, when it's you, you, like you were saying, Nish, that you have no net. I, I, I understand that um, from a different perspective which i won't go into but i i i i grok that but again what is to purify do we weave new nets for ourselves what does it mean some kind of purification process i believe is is happening it's part of the this galactic um surge of stuff that we're being blasted with but i don't understand it i think i'm going to get carl Kalman. i'm going to interview him for my other podcast because he he is very it's very interesting i don't want to go down that right now but i'm i'm speaking with my lovely wonderful attention in higher and different dimensions adhd <laughs> 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 I, I like this idea, though, of, you know, you mentioned earlier, Biebs, that um, you chose to be here, and I believe we all did, and and this is where I, I've always come into this idea of that, you know, lucidity, and I choose to be lucid in this experience, and 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 that means oftentimes really engaging in all the f being fully immersed in it and so that's why i i find myself you know the whole nietzschean thing is nietzschean thing is look looking into the darkness knowing that the sentient darkness is myself a but also myself is other that is observing me yeah so uh, and 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 this when it when we're having this kind of uh, awareness, this is you know Jung called it, and it, it's so beautiful in his red book. I can't wait to get my hands on those black books. Uh, is that it's this encounter with the collective unconscious, not just your personal unconscious, which can find other modes of uh, expression via aspects of your psyche, including, and of course, most notably, and uh, well, well versed in, in the popular culture now, the shadow. So it, it's, and having done so much work, internal work, and, and always being a seeker, we're all seekers here, it's, it's daunting sometimes, and I realize as my T-square is being activated, and then as this collective T-square is being activated as well, that there's an extra kick here, for me at least, and I'm not going to shut down. And so, and, and because it's not my first time at the rodeo, I, I know that I'll be all right. And I know I have the tool, I had the tools then, but I didn't know it. And it took me a lot of work to realize that I, I, I came through that. I needed that process and it was dealing with, you know, a lot of program stuff, you know, all that stuff. That's just a whole different conversation and a, a lot of craziness that was, you know, navigation, navigating the world that was unfolding in front of me. I know I can do this. That's what I'm saying. I know I can do this. I know I can see it. So I'm, I'm being extra 
extra vigilant right now. I have my eyes open and I, the idea of cleansing and cutting and clearing psychically is a big deal for me right now. And this is why I haven't, I haven't been drinking. I mean, I'm not a drinker anyway. I don't, it doesn't make me feel good. The, the thing, I'm a social drinker. What makes me feel good is having a drink with people I love. Right. So, uh, you know, I'm a two drink person anyway. So, but I don't, you know, I've, I've never been on any kind of meds and outside of thyroid meds and I haven't been on those in a decade. So, I'm not on anything. I'm literally not on anything except for good foods that I cook myself. And, uh, and, and, and that's not virtue signaling at all. This is what I needed to get my own engine being healthy because I'm prone to, I'm prone to having those, epi- the one episode made it very clear to me that I could get there. I don't want to be there again. That was one episode. That was a major, um, I use the word purification or shamanic death. You were being activated. There was something that needed to be um, uh, formed, a muscle, an etheric muscle that you've been working with and on up to this point since then. And I feel the same way. And I just sense that JJ the same for you oh, yeah. well. And um, you, thank, you know, you're totally answering my question of what is purification? Because so few, I'll, I'll bring that up, you know, with, with some people and, and there are rote answers and psychology today answers, but the deep, deep understanding is unfortunately um, not really accessed by uh, people that I come across. So this conversation is great. And you talked about the lucidity. And to really have lucidity, um, one can receive absolute terrifying visuals in seeing troops. It's, yeah, it's, it's the, it is really the greater work. Right, right, right. So- well, and I think being clear clear-minded, clear-headed, again, not placing judgment on anyone, but just, I don't think anyone can really work through these things and get through them and become stronger unless they really face them head on and stare into the darkness, as you say, and really feel everything, the terror, the pain, all of those difficult things. Um, I think you really have to experience all of those things to come out the other end of the tunnel. Oh, well said. Yes, here, here. And on the other side, um, and they're constant doorways. I mean, it's not just, you know, one doorway one walks through. They're constant portals. Um, you know, if you place your intention to be aware of the portals there, every time you step through a a doorway in your, in your house, you're going through um, an energetic portal and there are all kinds of tricks involved with that, but yes, yes, and yes. And um, I'm going to mute for a second because Lauren's coming out here and the dogs are going to go nuts. So, um, so (laughs) that's and and so this is just winding in on this idea of all this stuff that's going on that we were we were going to talk about in the collective is we're just three people having a conversation about how we're processing all this in different places very very different places in the u.s you know, BB, you are in the Southwest. I'm in the Northwest. JJ's in the East, Northeast. Yeah. And uh, I mean, we've got a, a grand shrine here. And so it's, it's interesting. And, and these are the kinds of ways in which we connect uh, on a bigger grid, on a bigger energetic grid. And and try to work these things out because we have to reach out to find out that we're not alone, to find out that 
what we're sensing is something that we're all getting. And is this, it, are we sensing, is in, for me, in the reaching out to people I trust and love and in hearing different perspectives of how we're all experiencing the outer world and the collective is a way to recalibrate myself. And as I had started in on saying that this is what I'm feeling and this anxiety I'm having is not unwarranted that that it, it is real i'm not just creating it and and i know intellectually my mind knows that i'm not but it's because of my experience in the past and not having people understand or able to reach me uh it it, it can be very it can be a very lonely place to be. And so that's why this kind of process work is really important. And we can do this at this point remotely like this. This is like a psychic connecting through technology. And and that's that's what is making me feel better. Like today, JJ, talking to you back and forth about processing this and knowing that you're not judging me that you actually are perceiving things in a similar way and that you two are weaving through these waves and it it, it brings me a comfort knowing that I'm not alone in this and I I have to think that more people are feeling this, but they don't have the capacity, means, or way. They don't see the doorway in which to connect to others and and get that kind of validation that no, they're not misperceiving this energy and that we're not alone and that this is actually really something that we're all going through on some level. Thank you. I, I'm i hugging you right now. I hope you're feeling that. Thank you for putting it out there. And I know that there will be people who are listening to this right now in the future who are just so grateful for your words, Nish. And you've motivated me. I never wanted to talk about this publicly, but this is part of the weaving you know, I've shared that I have ADHD, and when I um, I didn't know it was ADHD, I was diagnosed as being um, bipolar because uh, it, it it resembles that when you you know in the more um, extreme versions, and I also would get uh, my mood would, would be very very difficult to deal with the um the fluctuations were really you know as i said that's where i learned to just hang on to the mast well my point of of saying all that is that in 20 it was 2007 i started taking adderall and i actually was ashamed of it i never told anybody when i moved to tucson in february it occurred to me that I really, I, you know, in the back of my head, I, I thought I really don't want to die being on this medication when I'm in my, you know, when I'm 130. I think I should have learned something by then and I want to navigate. Well, I ended up consulting with a naturopath um, back in February. And it turned out that my blood pressure, he, he ran out to my car when I left. He said, would you just go to an urgent care? I'm afraid you're going to have a stroke. Your blood pressure, my blood pressure was like almost 150 over whatever. Oh my which, God. Yes. And that was what the medication, I, they put me in Los Angeles on an extremely high dose. And I just, I didn't question it. Okay, fast forward. I'm completely off of Adderall now. I have been swimming every day for lucidity and clarity and to to 
just infuse my my um, my avatar with a sense of vitality, and I'm really feeling it. And I think it's very important to be medication free if you can. I don't want that. I mean, I wish there were a way for Lauren to um, get out of it, but she will end up in the hospital if she goes over it. But I'm working with her team who are wonderful and they have the same desire that we, you know, get hold of this beast via nutrition and biofeedback and um, supplementation as opposed to um, really old school anti psychotics and lithium and it's it's terrible it's it you know but that being said i'm adderall free i've never i've never even said publicly that i was even taking it this is wow jj right yeah maybe fantastic. we said this at the very beginning i don't remember if we, you were recording or not but you look I, we literally said this you look the best we've ever seen i've ever seen you and yeah. I, I heard jj chime in on that I, like seriously that is that should be a huge not that this matters that should be a huge amount of validation to you because we didn't know this and you you literally are vibrant you look so good and Thank that you. has to be connected bb oh i know it is there is no doubt and um it was very important to me to have access to a swimming pool <laughs> it was a big deal because i love to swim i have very little uh water in my chart and uh, uh, but i love to swim and I feel very connected to the earth and the elements when I'm in water and that's, you know, it's all, it's all part of it, but going back to what, and thank you for that. And yes, that's tremendous validation. My God, you know? Yeah. Um, it's, well, yeah, it's I mean, we very, have no idea. <laughs> uh, yeah. And you sound great too. Like you, I would never know a difference. You seem, you seem very clear. That's really, that, that's great. That's great to hear. Well, we're doing something I feel that's very useful by putting this out into the ethers where we are weaving a form of adventurous lucidity and adventurous coherency and maturity. What's another word for, for that? Those who have been through um, <laughs> the needle, right? The eye of the needle, um, have a certain perspective. Even if people don't understand what we're saying, there are levels that they're going to receive this. And I'm not talking about people who are going to be listening to this recording, just that it is, um, okay. One of the results of, of being medication free and eating really, really well. And yes, we do all our own cooking, et cetera, et cetera. And you, you know, I have a Berkey filter and, and hydrating is so important and hydrating in the right ways. And there's recovery time and then there's high intensity time and it's a balance. But one of the upshots of this whole thing is that I started noticing about a week ago that I am able to see the, um, uh, there are different grids and these are, some of them are natural that are emanating from the earth. Some of them are coming from the galactics, the galaxies. Some are, uh, uh, well, let me just put it this way. I'm seeing grids that are natural and unnatural. And I'm, I'm sitting on my porch right now. I'm looking at the sky and there's, there's a, an undulating movement of joy to my words. It's so beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I think that we just have to keep on having our conversation and stirring our energetic cauldron and, if anyone else is so inclined, it, these things happen in, in pockets. And this is something we can no longer do it alone. It's amplified when we get together like this. That's, yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. We, we need to, it, it is for the betterment to find connection 
and and still remain individuated you know we're a cell within a body and you know is a you know we're we're all here flowing in this stream in this strange river there's a consciousness i think you're picking up on nish in um when you were telling us about the the high levels of anxiety that you've been navigating through i really think that um this is the make or break time for the human tribe here on earth at this point right now and there is such terror involved in that uh contemplating that the choices etc cetera, etc cetera. but there are good people out there and not obviously is uh what you see is what's really there but i've been trying to access information keeping my mind um uh that was a light bulb i just clunked on the table <laughs> keeping my mind um not like a sieve as the way it used to be in the old days before i had any consciousness of this but open with my um personal boundaries intact but to it's a muscle of of accessing information that um i may not necessarily agree with but i'm going to take it in i'm going to turn it around and i'm going to really look at it whereas even a year ago i was getting so triggered <laughs> and i realized i was i was actually in judgment where i would um but it was a necessary process it was a learning process where uh, i i i was right to turn off certain things or not listen because it it i couldn't handle it i i've been developing that muscle where i'm more and more able to um people use the word discern uh to access without being polluted i can this is what i think this is kind of the theme of the of our conversation what it, it's where we get polluted we don't want to become polluted we don't want to become toxified we don't want to have the poison have its way with us but i do believe that there is a high state where we can ingest the poison and look at it and and let it go where it will not be harmful to any thing any one any place does this make sense to you because i'm kind of thinking out loud right now oh totally i think it also you know it it speaks to the idea of being the observer of everything too because i think i find myself doing the same thing where i you know i try not I try to limit the time i spend every day looking at the new new the news for the day and things like that but i also i do look at everything i look at the mainstream i look at the alt news because i want to see all the different parts of everything whether whether it's my viewpoint or whether i agree or not i feel like I just want to experience all of that information and observe it so that I can move forward knowing that I'm making my own decision like I really I believe that we do create the world we want to be in in our surroundings so I like to see what's going on and try to navigate the next direction and but not let it because you can if you look at all this stuff too much and you absorb it like a toxin like you're saying it can definitely pollute you it can shift the way that you project the world outside of you what what you want that world to be for you your environment yes you you're pointing to a really fundamental aspect of what is known as spiritual maturity. And so if you people have that and this is what we're navigating personally the three of us now 
and why we resonate so deeply with one another because the three of us really do get each other. But I also, I listen to our conversations and my intention and, and my, my, my wish and my recognition of what's going on here is that it, it's really important for everyone to find people that you connect with, that you feel are not going to be in judgment with you. And I know that some people aren't in that place, which is terrible, but know that it's happening more and more. People are finding kindred folk. And I, I, I think that as I look down the pike along this riverbed that we're walking, that we are, progressing down, we're pros processing the procession of the sisters. There is a holding the lanterns high, each of us, as we walk into this uncharted river of, of life, of time, of experience, of beingness. It's happening um, the collective is there, the collective that has existed, that we have inherited, not just being born into the place and the family stream and the story. It's also deeply embedded in our physical and etheric DNA. So there are all of these um, unravelings and recognitions and grapplings that we're, we're dealing with personally. But there comes a point where... I feel it like I'm looking at the sky again. I see my words going out like musical notes. And it doesn't mean I'm better than anybody or anything like that. It's just what I'm seeing. And, and I know that Nish and JG understand. You know, there's that part of me that's like, oh God, do I sound like super new age and, and holier than thou? And I hope to God not, because I'm not. <laughs> but I see the languaging is working with the birds. The languaging is dancing with the birds. It's beyond the, um, the human meaning. It's the energy signature. And we're changing the energy signature. I'll be quiet for a minute. <laughs> this, is, this is important. And it's something I've, I've been struggling with this whole, probably this year, and have talked and keep talking about in different places because obviously I'm I'm struggling with it on some level, and not in a not on a personal level, but on at a different, more in a collective level is the idea of the constraints of others, the the shackles that others wear, and. Uh, how coming in, okay, so I guess this is a better way to, I guess this is why I've been talking about this a lot. And so recently, you know, my main analogy is we're all naked right now. We're all nude. This is a great revealing and we're seeing, we're seeing everyone more clearly now without their adornment and their veils or seeing behaviors and and ideas we're seeing what these trees are the fruit we're all seeing it and for better or for worse and everyone knows i i come from a space of everything is necessary so there's no there's no real good or bad in my universe and we've talked about that you know the spider exists because the spider exists you know the fly may not like it and so but what I have personally been dealing with is the judgments of others, not on myself, but on, on, on a place in where I find myself going and in, in a state in which I find myself being drawn to. And as, as was being said earlier with the idea of being okay with the idea of empath compassion and pulling in and talking about those ideas that for me at one point were associated with things i had a negative connotation with like the new age movement 
and uh, and it's not the movement and it's not the energy of that. It was the way it became co-opted and branded and sold. And, and then, so, but beyond that, and that's not what I'm speaking of specifically here. What I'm speaking of here then becomes the idea of people that are chained, the devil card in the tarot, chained to their beliefs, chained to their construct. And those people that I can look at and see that they've created such a small space to dwell within, to, to, to find a perspective of the world around them, yet they're chained. They're chained in by their own ideas and limitations and that that they are unable to see or willingly we are all we all willingly sign up for our we all willingly create our construct one way or another there's a you know we accept these contracts and then we become you, you know these uh, each chain each link in the chain of our slavery you know we we have helped forge and so those people coming in contact with me personally and i'm just trying to bring it in my in my life uh how their words can affect me and have affected me in the past well i'm moving away from that in i don't want to say above it or uh, i'm just i'm finding myself shifting away from that and this whole year i've been really talking about the the debunker attitude and this it's it's bothered me it's a collective sickness this whole fake what's fake what's real all this it's a collective sickness that's holding a lot of us down for because of our own contracts because of our own letting go of acceptance of freeing of our chains and so these people in their perspective coming into judgment of me as i'm moving out of my own prison my own construct are affecting me less and less and i find myself almost it almost feels like the fire touches my feet and i'm reminded that they're there and 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 for whatever reason they had a hold on me where i had contracts with these ideas for whatever reason that still stings and i find and, and it can pull one down it can pull one down and so at first i thought Ignoring it was a good way to go. And now I realize, no, I, I'm looking down. I hate to say that. I don't want to say it. I'm looking at. But for me, the idea is I'm rising up. I feel like I'm, I'm actually getting lighter. I'm effervescent in, you know, I feel effervescent. And so there's a sense of, I put this in a poem a long time ago, you know, the, the heavy clay is moving downward and i'm an effervescent bubble that is created by that clay moving downward and and i am a bubble moving to the surface an air bubble mm -hmm. and uh they're looking these these people and their opinions and their their small worlds are looking denser and darker to me as i move further away from them and it's helping me to look in into that darkness and see what what it is and uh it's only been recently that i realized i've been swirling around this idea it was an air bubble under the clay that just needed the clay to move down further into the depth of the darkness into the depths of the water that it was the sheer physics of it was going to push me at some point round this mound of clay and upwards and that's where i feel like i i'm i'm finally coming round and moving upwards there's some sort of ascension that i'm feeling on a very personal level and i'm not afraid of that word 
I'm not afraid of that idea. Why would I be? And, and that again was that clay, those, those people, those constructs, these ideas that were holding me down that I let hold me down. And so uh, I'm all right personally with the idea of saying I, I feel empathic. I feel empathy. I feel compassion. I feel love and beauty. And yet I am not trapped by those ideas because I am not those ideas either. I am something else. We are all something else in these emotions, these ideas, these words, these chains, that clay, that air is all also something else. There's a bigger mystery here. And I feel like I am just starting to crack into that. And I do believe that this paranoia, this tension I'm feeling personally that I'm also perceiving collectively is at play here. And it's a bigger idea. And it's part of the, the, the virus that's going around, the mind virus, the idea of a virus in the cells, in the body, the shedding, how the body sheds a virus. And it's, it's bigger than we know. And we, we just don't know and yet it's bigger than we know. But I feel like I, I can't even find a cohesive way to state this process that I feel so many of us are actually actively engaging in. But we're, we're doing it and we're trying to find language for that which has no language. And so here we are. Here we are dancing together. And it is a dark, dangerous time. The clay's moving downward into the sentient darkness. We're all just effervescent air bubbles. Some of us are trapped under, but eventually we do rise. It's almost like when you went under your bed when you were 17, you knew that you would be turning into a bubble and you weren't ready to rise because it was going to break you. I think you, you were, you know... <laughs> it's such wisdom to do what you did. Uh, well, I was afraid. I was at 17. I was afraid of a lot of stuff at that time. Everything I saw, you know, start, San Francisco is a dark place anyway. I'd already had a very dark life and I wasn't aware of how dark it was. Our norm, your individual normal is always something to consider right? I mean, it's, it's your normal, and it comes down to different things. Again, that, this, that, uh, that overworked cliche of the spider and the fly. I, I had this normalcy bias, and uh, for whatever reasons, that, that was what I was working with. And so when I start, stepped outside of that, and I saw that I'm in a way bigger place, it's that whole Plato's cave thing, and uh, that it was nothing like I saw is way bigger, way scarier. And at that time, also, I had this gigantic fear of death. And it had a power over me. It had a hold on me. And I don't have that anymore. Of course, it's, a, you know, it's, it's something that I, I view myself as immortal. And you, everyone knows this. Uh, not necessarily I niche, but I is a whole consciousness and my ego is in there. I don't, I'm not subscribing or signing up for having a wipe. As we talked about last night, I seek to maintain everything and I don't want to be wiped. I, I want the pain. I want the experience. I want to remember who I am. I want to know what I am. I'm ready to see that. As, as unstable as I feel sometimes, I'm ready to see that. And I think on some level, that's what we're all going through right now. I think we're all going through, if we allow ourselves, we're all moving through this process of understanding where we come from and what we really are. And that's scary because that is a death. We're all dying. 
but we're all living. We're alive while we're dying. And I, I didn't acknowledge the power death had on me mm-hmm. for so long. And now, now I see it because there's a loss of control. You have to let go and you have to write it out. incredible i i think it you know just i'll i'm always simplified (laughs) but i mean it is the fear of the great unknown and i think fear is such a a trap and a prison for all of us at times and i think if we can somehow flip it around and maybe look at that unknown as something amazing and wonderful and something that's going to reveal who we are to ourselves, that would be the most empowering thing for us. I'm not afraid of dying anymore either. I've had a few scary brushes with death and all kinds of situations. And it's been the most liberating thing for me. We lost JJ again. We lost JJ, she'll be back. Yes. This is amazing this conversation and this is exactly the kind of um, these revelations that we're sharing that we're having personally are oh there there she is JJ there she is welcome back you popped out for a bit I sure did sorry Uh, (laughs) I was like liberated That was witchy. Sorry. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, that yeah. happened earlier too. I had actually yeah. Yeah. signal well, went out. We didn't speak to that, but yeah, it did. The um, you know, Tom has said to me over the years um, in situations where I go, "What? What did I say? What did I?" do when people get really pissed off at me and he would say maybe you left him in your golden dust (laughs) oh I love that I I I, love that um, yes and I you know I would at first I I I really didn't understand what he was saying but he said no I mean it you are like you're levitating out of this thing and, and and they're they're throwing sand at you but you know you're throwing them you're not doing it but the you know the um uh uh, agitation of the movement of you popping out, like being liberated, like JJ was just saying, is like <laughs> the golden dust is spinning right back into your eye. That's kind of the theme I'm I'm sensing too. It's this greatest theme of liber- liberation, mm-hmm. and and I think that's what's going on collectively. The idea of liberation is somehow in the mix here. And it's on personal level, on a collective level, there's, there's this sense of everyone knows somehow there's a control grid. And the control grid knows that everyone is now aware of it. And so here's the real classic uh, war we're in on a spiritual level. And, and liberation is a very big idea on all, all realms. And it's something that when you start wrapping, when you start meditating into the idea of, of liberation, and if you do it through self, like through the idea of sovereignty, personal sovereignty, not politicalized, uh, it, it is... It is, it's masterful. It, it, it is something that can work its magic. And this is without, without the wonderful ego. You know, like last night we talked, the, we need the ego. You need a strong ego. That's your, that's your front. And uh, it doesn't need to be out of control and all that. But a strong ego is a beautiful thing. And uh, it's, a, it's like your circle. It's your boundary. It's your, it's your, immune system if it's proper and so to liberate yourself is to free yourself and to free yourself is to let go and to let go 
is part of the process of dying. And what is dying is we're always saying dying, you can look at it as dying or you can look at it as birthing. It's a membrane. It's a cowl. We're, we're moving through it no matter what. And apparently we really are collectively moving through something on that level. You know, I don't think these energies from my perspective and my, my understanding, and this could be completely different for other people and that's fine, but I don't think we're dealing with new energies. I think that the revelation, the big revelation is revealing what's always been there. And that's why it's so incredibly overwhelming. And, you know, to really see, to have that lucidity. Um, as I said, you know, what can be presented is, can be absolutely terrifying. And you need a, a strong energetic muscle to withstand the weight of the, um, the force of uh, sometimes the truth. And, but, like the 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 controlling grid when i for myself and i'm speaking for myself and and i'm not saying this is the right way because it just is something that i've been observing in an ease that has been developing in my experience and just like kind of effortlessly letting that medication which i understand is very addictive but i just stopped and there's an ease that I'm moving through things now. It's understanding that um, it's all us. It's all us. And that there is no um, duality in this. Yes, on one level, there is a spiritual war. Of course there is. But when I take it all as myself, like looking in a dream, I have this really energizing buzz that goes on when the Dantian is. I mean, also doing a lot of Qigong. Oh man, and um, it, it it's like a motor that um, there's an effervescence there. You were talking about that that niche, and I that's how I relate to it. This effervescence that kind of originates in the belly, and it's connected to um, the 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 some people think the chakras are, are um, some kind of um, thing that were inserted. It's just um, a metaphor that the ancient sages used to express what cannot be expressed in language for these different realms. So there's that connection to, um, from the human body perspective, the higher realms and the, the earth, the darkness, the depth. And um, that's all I got right now. <laughs> my dogs are distracting. So my, uh, yeah, my distraction level has gone up, but I'm so much happier. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, I think if we're ever to, I agree with you, BB, this was always here. But it's like, it's, it's the idea of activation. It takes enough, or, you know, we could throw that hundred monkey idea into it. It's about, or, you know, I like the idea of activation. It's always here. Everything's always here. It's all here. All of it. It's all here. There's nothing, nothing that can't be thought or, or imagined or any, it's all here. We're creating, this is all the prime material. And, you know, we could look like with life and death, you know, it, since we're in a realm of duality, war and dancing, it's the same coin. So uh, sometimes it's, it behooves us to look at, at dancing as a war or as, as dancing. And, and it, you know, in the idea of du dualistic nature, it's, you know, I mean, everything around here, everyone I think can agree on that is just like the sun, moon, the day, night, dream, awake, all that dualistic stuff, especially the deeper into materiality we get is, is it play, how it's always flipping back and forth in antiodramia. And so somehow 
we as a bigger body, we as a bigger consciousness are coming into. We are coming into. And so, and we are they, and they are we. I am you, and you are me. And so, but that doesn't, that idea doesn't negate or strip away the idea of I can maintain my individuality and move through this. And I think that's where my early fear of death was. When I finally, you know, I came in, I, I was struck by the idea that I couldn't move my flesh and couldn't get oriented and realized I was in flesh again, even though I still don't know where I came from. I was struck by that. And my fear of death was loss of identity. And I think that's that's what it is. And in the tarot, the hangman, I mean, the hangman is the cards about acceptance. And one of the things that happens when you're in that state is all that you possessed is shaken, you know, your gold's shaken out of your, falls out of your pockets and all this. You're stripped down, even though you're not at the same time, because you are not, you're not, you're not your possessions. You're not the gold in your pocket. And so that's, that's where I've come to, at least at this point, I am alive while I'm dying and I can, I, I really, the, the, the light inside of me can maintain and move through this in a lucid way. And with that idea I'm constantly rising into lucidity, awakening within lucidity and becoming more lucid. And at some point I have this feeling that it, when I'm dreaming, the idea of dreaming, if I really truly awaken on a deeper level within the dream, the dreamer loves the dream, the dreamer feeds the dream, that there's some sort of mechanism that will kick in and it all comes together. And on, on a mundane level, I think some may consider that death, but I consider it life. And so mm. life in a way that claims the I still survives. And yet the, the I that is out of control is the I that's attach these attack the chains you know i love my cottage i love this and that and the baubles of of my expression of my adornment but those are not me and this greater idea of me does and can and will survive it's just priorities shift ideas shift and I, I, I'm seeking to be lucid, I guess, is what I'm saying. I'm seeking to allow things to fall away and not allow myself to fall away with them. And this is where, where we walk into the idea of pain and identifying with pain and being abused and identifying with being abused. I, and that's why doing all the work is important why we come to these ideas of forgiveness and moving into forgiveness and allowing ourselves to to accept that thing we didn't want to say or that action we didn't want to do or all these things that the chatter that can make us paranoid the chatter that can bring us down and without wiping without i don't i I want to maintain those experiences. I just want to detach from them in a way that's holding me back. And yet I want to remember them. I don't want to forget them. And that's a big point in, for me in lucidity is I don't want to forget. I want to remember. And I want to push into the idea of remembering. And so anything I find myself wanting to forget or numb or drown myself from is a clue that I need to look into that darkness. Oh, God, yes. Well said. Well said, indeed. And, you know, <coughs> excuse me. 
Um, boy, I don't want to be wiped either. Just that, that wouldn't be any fun. You know, <laughs> I, there is an acceptance and a taking of responsibility of, of doing this thing that, that we came here to do, that, that everybody is literally being called to it because it's obvious, you know, if you look at the, um, whatever this place is, I was going to say globe, but it, it's, it's not quite that, but every human being who is, um, uh, alive right now here is being called to do, do exactly what you were just laying out to become more lucid. And for me, um, I, I'm, I'm really intrigued and have a lot of joy and expansion in remembering what it was being lucid when I was really little. I'm really coming back into those memories of, of being physical and, and being in the dream and knowing I was in the dream without being having the language for it, but recognizing the physicality of that more and more as of late. And I think that whatever, however you do it, if you do it that way, or if you practice actual lucid dreaming, this is very important right now. It is. The idea when we look at the, when we look around us at this forceful narrative that's going on that is literally covering our mouths and our nose and, uh, you know, now they're talking goggles, you know, what, what's, what's this about? And what is the deeper messaging here? It's, it's, a deeper messaging these are powerful symbols and we're 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 being forced to capitulate to to contract with these with this symbol of control out of what fear and and so and this is what we're seeing with this pushback the pushback is ultimately no matter where it's coming from and who is doing it what group is doing it each of them each of these groups is pushing up is pushing back against control and control grids and certainly there is this trojan horse aspect of of saboteurs and you know how virus works getting in uh to the cell and exactly i agree with you we're seeing the um you know the as above so below the analogy has become um it's in our material world it has manifested for us because we don't have that much um linear time available because of the stupidity of of the ancestors, all of our ancestors since the Industrial Revolution, you know, they, they set up the world that we inherited and they set it up in such a way that it's, it's super fucked up. <laughs> and, you know, there's this terror, we got to do something, we got to do it now. And um, it, it's not just the material, we're healing eons and eons of fear. I think fear's a shell. Fear fear's like a crust, you know, and it 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 has a purpose. Everything has a purpose. We need fear keeps us alive. And so if we're in the jungle, you know, you need to rely on that sense to to know where it is and understand what it is and then work your way around not being consumed by it, you know, the lion and the gazelle. So it, it, it's, it does no good to, it's not, pro, it's not um, productive to push it away and other it. And so, and yet it's not productive towards, it, it, if I'm the gazelle, it's not going to serve me to jump right into the mouth of the lion unless that's what I'm doing. And I know that's what I'm doing. And we do see this moment 
on tape, if you've had a snake or anything that eats it, something else, mm -hmm. there is always that kind of magical moment where you see there's a contract being made. I've, I've had snakes and I've seen that when the mice or rats yeah. get to that moment and they just, that some of them may fight and fight. And then finally there's this, there's like, you see some sort of weird contract going on yeah. and there's an, they just lay down. It's like, they just accept it. They become dance partners. Yes. It will, the dance and the, the war and the dance, yeah. it's all that same process. But until then, you know, that instinct is a, is a good thing. And, and fear is a, a good thing. Danger is a good thing because it creates something more. It's one of those powerful forces in the world and it, it, it can, it can get you off your ass. Well, you that's know. what's happening right now. <laughs> it certainly is. People are <laughs> off their asses well, yeah. for sure. It's forcing yeah. people to make choices. It's forcing people to look at themselves and look at the world and uh, decide, do I want my life to go this way? Do we want things to, you know, I mean, it's, there's, as you're saying, such a factor of control going on and we have a choice. We do have a choice. We can say, no, I'm not going to put on the goggles and all this other stuff. I'm going to live. I'm here to live. I'm here to experience. I'm not going to live my life in fear. Or we can just do the dance and make the contract and lay down and say, okay, you can have me. Oh, yes, I absolutely I do. And there's also a way of saying, you know what, I'm not buying into the fear, but I'm sensing that I should be cautious right now. And maybe I will put a mask on, although I'm not saying that's what you should do. But it's like, it has to be an individual um, uh, choice that comes out of self-sovereignty. And that yes, yes. It has to be. It, it just, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Well, well with, with this virus thing, which, I, you know, I, we all saw that coming down the pike. And uh, I chose initially to completely isolate i mean i'm i live isolated anyway from the collective basically but i chose to really be super cautious i would you know i i really was like as i always am when something new comes online something new is moving through i tend you know i'm very wolfy like that i stand at the edge of the wood and watch and and that's what i did and and i I'm, I've never been one to say it's not what it appears, but it is what it appears. I've been one to say it's more than it appears. And, uh, and still to this day, it, it, it's, there's, there's, there are choices we make and uh, it, I don't want to so with me, like here I am, it's, we have to wear a mask outside in right. Washington. And um, I guess, unless you're protesting and, uh, uh, and so, I mean, just you on that, but you know, they're really strict now and they're starting to, I saw like in DC, they're finding a thousand dollars and stuff like that. It is, it is how, how do how does one navigate this territory? How, how do we navigate this territory? I personally am one of those when in Rome kinds of people. And so I, but I do have a Leo moon and I'm very expressive. So, you know, it's still got my flair. <laughs> <laughs> I look like a, a <laughs> one that, that like I keep getting called in places when I go out a gypsy princess because I'm having like Scheherazade veils yes. and so, uh, <laughs> very beautiful very very beautiful do it oh I love it you know, lace dripping and, and mantillas is, are basically what I'm wearing. And uh, because I, I actually understand on, on all the 
actual mask it says on the packaging does not protect you from coronavirus. So I figured the optics of capitulation, I still have a choice in adornment and I'm choosing beauty and I'm not choosing any kind of option that is looking like, you know, the medical options and those, and they, they do not protect you from whatever this particular virus is. I love this. I just love this. You're, you're, this is a perfect illustration of what we were talking about. That it's got to be a choice coming from a sovereignty. Mm-hmm. A sovereignty. Because we it, have to wear a mask here in, in Tucson as well. And like you, it's not so much when in Rome, but I feel that, you know, if I don't wear one and I don't believe, I don't think there's enough information because I've, I've been doing, I've been researching this thing since February because Susan had to go to uh, Korea when, before everything started coming down. Right. The I remember. And that's yeah. when I started my research. There is no, uh, there's no consensus. Um, I have a cousin who is um, actually had a, a pediatric oncology at the, 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 the dark, dark Johns Hopkins, right? Oh my God. No, mm-hmm. great. <laughs> he is so wonderful. We grew up together. And he goes, babe, we don't know enough about it. And off the record, I would just, you know, we just don't know how this thing works yet. Mm-hmm. So, you know, um, you're not probably going to uh, catch it. But when people get fearful, uh, the respiration rates go up. Right. And, um, yes. It, you know, the air starts moving more. So he said, just be on the safe side. We don't know yet. And I, I took that in. Right. Um, but now we do have to wear them. And um, it's just, you know, it, it is what it is. And you know what? What just occurred to me? I heard somebody, it may have been Michael Tessarian years ago. Maybe it was him. Maybe it was somebody else. And this is out there somewhere. I mean, it, it can be researched. And I, I, I'm just going to, you know. Uh, the seat of my pants. I'm flying by the seat of my pants. <laughs> the Enochian angelics were um, actual um, a virus mm. that is in our um, v- virome. They are a part of us and they operate on a higher level. And this was it's like, I remember listening to this conversation. I go, what? What? Mm-hmm. So I'm just, um, you know, putting that, uh, just reminded me of that. I hadn't thought about that in a long time. Well, there's a, there's a lot at play here. And, and I, you know, I, I've, I've talked about my deep blue idea of what, what it is. There's definitely, there's definitely a body snatcher scenario going on. And, um, you know, I put that out in my psychic eyes and stuff like that. And I think I, I've talked about it on one of these and I definitely put it out in videos. So, but just with the idea of the collective, I feel, I feel like, I feel beautiful when I'm putting forth my adornment and I'm always separate anyway. It's the Leo moon it's the Leo in me. Well, I'm a fire chart anyway. And so I, I'm always kind of standing out no matter what. It's just my sense of identity and self. And, and it's, it's not for the idea of standing out. It's just that I feel free in my form of self-expression. I always have, I have forever and ever. It's just, I just do not care what others think of me and that's why nothing ever looks like a costume on me you know what i'm saying that's why everything yes people when they encounter me they encounter me and they sense this realness this authenticity this genuineness as opposed to some cosplaying and plus of course i use real materials and you know i mean everything's the real deal and so so moving into the collective in that way, you know, I'm very much like something out of Avalon or, you know, something, I'm, I, I, everything to me is symbols. So talking in symbols, painting words, 
painting pictures with words. You know, this is why poetry is very important to me. Uh, and and moving around and, and playing with symbols. This is why I present myself in the way I am. It's just the way I function. And so why would I change that in light of, of everything that's going on right now? Okay, so then I'm going to go out in this. I'm following the rules with as much pushback and resistance as possible. But I can tell you, I do not want to land in a place that's more restrictive. And so my forms of resistance are very, very real. Uh, and I'm not going to put them out here in the, on, in the public, but I have always been a rebel. And I, ha I really do walk the walk, walk the talk. And uh, you don't have to be out there creating, you know, breaking things and destroying things to be a rebel and resisting. There are so many ways to, to push against that which is trying to control you. There are so many ways and you can be, there's so much creativity at our hands at all times. And, and that's why on the surface level, in the most materialistic level, you can observe that in some people. You can, you know, so I get called a gypsy princess. Of course, that's, you know, I'm not even allowed to say gypsy. Uh, and so, wow. whatever, that's how people are perceiving me. I get that constantly now. You know what it is, Nish? Your energetic signature is all about you and it's authentic. We all, each of us has our own unique, completely. I mean, there's no, no energetic signature like ours, except us. That, that's what I believe we, we take with us, you know, as we go through all these experiences. But you are a, a, literally a walking example of um, energetic signatorial lucidity, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, it, it's just, it's just my natural state and I honor it. And that's a sense of sovereignty. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the people that are calling, you know, out there saying rule followers and all that. And, and I listen, like JJ said, I listen to the whole gamut of people speaking. And because this is where you're going to find, I think, you're looking at the bigger picture then you're getting all the this bigger canvas and uh i've i you can i could be called a rule follower because i'm gonna wear i'm gonna look like scheherazade or whatever how are people perceiving me but i'm not i'm not following the rules at the same time but i appear to be following the rules so in my get up i can breathe because it's it's lace beautiful. it's beautiful lace and it's a it's a, this idea of a veil it's a veil and uh and that's basically a deeper aspect for me of okay so we're being forced to cover our eyes ears and mouth what is that that's a cowl that's a cowl this is more imagery for me on birthing and or deafing, whatever. And I am going to move into that in the way I move into it. So I'm viewing it from a way different perspective than, than other people that are, are feeling, uh, I don't know, I guess I've lost my narrative here, but. Well, no, I think that, um, and JJ, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think JJ and I resonate with this, I feel, because we are each doing that as well in our, in our, within our own energetic signatures and what is authentic to each of us. And this is important work. This is part of the weaving. When did, become, when did being cautious and aware become a bad thing. I think, I think that that's, that's the idea. So there's, there's this, we know that like on an actual brass tacks level, 
that, you know, you get these masks and it says right on the packaging, does not protect you from coronavirus. Literally says that in the packaging. So, and, and yet, you've got to wear one because of the coronavirus, right? It's, it's ridiculous. And oh, obviously it's, it's about more than that. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry. I, you like a, tr- a, a, a dream memory was just triggered. Go on. And I'll, I'm, I'm Oh no, bring it. <laughs> if it's triggered, bring it in now, please. I, I was with, before I married my first husband, I eloped when I was 18 or two weeks before my 19th birthday. And in the months leading up to that, I had this, dream that um, I was somewhere in Tucson and we were somewhere hiking and I saw this group of people and they were wearing, um, their whole heads were hooded and they were wearing long robes and they were walking in unison and there was this huge cliff and they all jumped off and the word, they are lemmings. And I woke up. Oh my goodness. (laughs) Wow. Holy <laughs> 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 oh crap. Jesus, baby. Two in one one session here. Oh, oh my, my god. God. Um everyone should get off their medication. <laughs> <laughs> right. And amp your lucidity level. Get off the meds. Oh my God. Um I you know, we are going on almost two and a half. Um, I know this has been a long session. (laughs) (laughs) For my spirit, babies. Oh, there's a bumblebee, of course, right now. Um, (laughs) They follow me around. Um, Yeah, me too. (laughs) I I love it. I have a request. Um, This is personal, but I I just want to put it out there. I sent you guys a message uh, with a song, and it's very short, but the song was written for me, and I can't mention any names because there's a widow out there who doesn't probably has no clue and i i but i i just wanted you to um click and hear that song and it part of my energetic signature was was used in that Mm. did you send it to twitter or group i'll 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 send it uh, i'm going to text you the links later okay good thank you yes it's been a crazy week yeah, I know. It gives me such joy, but I, I don't want to step on anyone's um, feelings. Out of yeah, I, 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 you know, I 100% understand and relate to that. <laughs> but um, it's like the, the, there's this other aspect of the three of us, and I'm speaking of JJ, and I... I, I'm sensing this, like, like I keep coming back to the imagery of the spiraling DNA and that you, um, I feel you spiraling in terms of grounding and accord and family and comfort um, that, that nobody else could get. <laughs> but JJ, there's such such strength and again i've said this before you know uh, when you speak it's wham bam but when you don't speak it's equally as powerful it's so palpable it's amazing (laughs) it's true jj is such a solid jj i think is the most solid person in my life personally like I can't even and I know that she play is this way for many people actually uh well I don't want to say many but a few people <laughs> and it's whatever your energetic is like that JJ I'm not sure but I you know yeah there's there's something intense intensely uh I don't know I don't, I don't even, this is the thing with the mysteries. I don't even want to know, actually. I just am grateful for it. And it's why I'm in constant. I talk to JJ more than I talk to anyone on this planet. And that's the truth. That's the true, true. Oh my God. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you both. Um, yes. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I have this sort of I always want to fly under the radar I guess but I do you know I have a lot to say and I have a lot of things to contribute 
It's just I, I don't like to put it all out there until I find it's really pertinent and an important time to do it. And I like to be, you know, I like to really be an anchor or tether for people, I guess. That's wisdom. That's very wise. You're, you're circumspect. I think it helps me to ground myself somehow. Mm -hmm. It's not that I need, you know, I, I'm very independent, but I, I do feel the collective so much and I feel a lot of emotion and uh, compassion and empathy for the people in my small circle of loved ones. So, um, I don't know what I was going to say. I'm sorry, I'm a little overwhelmed about the, the compliments. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, well, I always let you know that though. I, I'm free with my love. The people I love. You both do. This is a big deal. And, and this is, a, I think, a good place to, you know, wrap this up to is we should, we should show our love. We should express our love. And, and I find I, this is one of those freeing things for me is there's something beautiful in expressing it. And it's, it's not always easy. You know, there's a time in my life when everyone felt, I felt like everything, everyone, a smile costs something, you know, there's been those moments in my life where I was like, can I trust this person? And, uh, so now I'm just a lover and I, I just express it freely. And that's why, I mean, JJ and I are constantly telling each other, we love each other. And I tell you every time, Bibi, I love you. And all the amazing people I find, I am really open about that. And I think that for whatever reason that that's been co-opted in the world where it's like become not okay or trendy i don't know what i don't know mm. what where why for me i like to express love and i don't care if that is love bombing or whatever other language <laughs> people can throw on it when i do it i'm sincere if i hurt you i hurt you and uh if i tell you i love you i mean it if I say I adore you, I mean it. I'm not just, it's not just lip service for me. And I want that in my personal world. And that's why I move forward with it. And the more I started to do that, the more it paid off. Because look at, look at the beautiful people around me. Look at, I've got you, BB. I've got JJ right here, right now as an expression in my outer world of love, both of you in this experience. That's so exquisite. I think it's hugely important to express our love for the, for the people we really do love. And I think this kind of connection that we have here and that other people have, and that we have with our other uh, loved ones is what is going to get us through. Um, I think it's what, go ahead. No, no. You go ahead. I, I just think it's what it's going, I think it is the thing that's going to make the biggest difference. You know, if, if there's this light at the end of, of the tunnel here in the situation that we're in, um, I think that's what's going to get us there is our compassion and our sharing of our love with each other and connecting and having these conversations and and just maintaining that human emotion uh, that we I think inherently all have yes well, I don't know. <laughs> or you know it comes down to as part of the weaving that we're doing we all need to in addition to expressing our love and gratitude Practice acts of kindness, smiling at strangers. And it, it's, it hopefully can be contagious because we've got a long lineage of fear and paranoia and suspicion 
that we are, um, well, the, the warlike term combating comes up, but, you know, if nothing else, if more and more people start being kind and listening with respect, even if you don't agree with somebody, that will go a long way. And like JJ, what you just said, th this is the only way we're going to make it through this eye of the needle. I love you guys so much. Oh my gosh. Oh my love God. You too, <laughs> yes. Both of you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I love you both. And I thank you again, you know, here we are wrapping up with our beautiful love for each other and group hug. It's so You're good. Oh, so good. It's so good. It's my, my, um, it's my chicken soup for my spirit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'll it's, have another bowl. <laughs> I'm grateful. I'm so grateful for both of you. It really, every time we talk, I always feel whatever, stresses or anxiety or whatever's been on my mind like after we talk i just feel like oh, that's i've so just good. done the best meditation i've ever done or something so it's good and i hope that people listening to us you know the right people will find us and i i hope that this is in some way uh finds people that need this energy and I, I just have a feeling it that our our chats here do I mean, this is just us chatting and that that this love vibration really does emanate out that's what i hope like a heartbeat yes i'm with i'm with you guys on that and i know that um the three of us offer this with respect for everyone because everybody is hungry for that that uh, you know it comes down to the cliche the milk of human kindness the love and being heard and being um seen so we hear you we see you we pray and send our our intention via the arrows of our love May find your hearts and may we all move through this together and we can smile with our eyes people we can smile with our eyes we sure can yes, we can <laughs> i love you and on that note it feels complete i always feel withdrawals right before i turn off the record button and we you know but it we must um let's continue our readings Yes, until next time. Thank you. Thank you. Much love. Much love.